Today, we're going to talk about October 2025. This was the day that huge chunks of the internet just stopped working. Poof. Gone. Now, this wasn't some kind of crazy cyber attack. It wasn't a solar flare. Nobody cut a giant cable under the ocean. No, this was something much, much weirder. It was like the internet just had a major brain freeze. Because that's pretty much what happened. The internet literally forgot where to find its most important stuff. You know, imagine forgetting your own home address. That's the scale we're talking about. And that one moment of digital amnesia brought pretty much the entire modern world to a screeching halt. So how could this possibly happen? Let's dig in. All right, we're going to treat this like a digital crime scene. The date is October 20th, 2025. The victims? Well, basically millions of users and thousands of companies. The cause? A total catastrophic failure to communicate. The first clue pops up in the middle of the night, 3.11 a.m. Eastern Time. Amazon Web Services, which is, you know, the backbone of a huge part of the internet, starts spitting out error messages. And the location here is absolutely critical, US-East 1 in Northern Virginia. Look, you have to understand this isn't just some random server farm. It's the oldest, it's the biggest, and it is arguably the single most important internet hub on the entire planet, and it was going down fast. So here's the twist. This wasn't an outside job. No hackers, no natural disaster. The call was coming from inside the house. A tiny, little self-inflicted software bug in the internet's main control room was about to cause a global meltdown. So, to really get how one tiny error could create so much chaos, we've got to pull back the curtain and see where the internet actually lives. Because it's not just some magical thing floating in the air, it's a very real, very physical place. We all call it the cloud, right? But a much better way to think about it is like a giant digital apartment building. See, companies like Netflix or Fortnite or Delta Airlines, they don't build their own massive server infrastructure. Instead, they just rent an apartment inside this huge building run by Amazon called AWS. It's super efficient, super powerful, and pretty much everyone lives there. And this apartment building, it's not just one building. It's more like a whole city. These physical buildings are called data centers, and they're grouped together into what AWS calls regions all across the globe. And US East 1, where our story started, Think of that as the capital city of this entire digital empire. Now, obviously, you don't want the whole city to go dark if there's a problem. So each region, each city, has multiple separate power stations. They're called availability zones, or AZs. They have their own power, their own cooling. They're physically miles apart from each other. This is the Internet's built-in plan B. If one gets flooded, the others are supposed to stay on. But on this particular day, plan B just didn't matter. Okay, so if the internet's own backup systems couldn't save it, what on earth went wrong? We know the location of the crime, but we still need to find the murder weapon. And the answer, it turns out, is a simple case of a missing address. So, let me introduce you to our first piece of evidence, DNS, the domain name system. Think of it as the internet's phone book. When you type a website name into your browser, your computer has no idea what that means. DNS is the thing that looks up that name and translates it into a numerical IP address that computers can actually understand. Without DNS, every website is basically an unlisted number. And here's our second key player, DynamoDB. If AWS is the giant apartment building, DynamoDB is the central filing cabinet inside. This is where all the really important stuff is stored. Your game saves, your flight booking, your language lesson progress. It's the core data that makes almost every app you use actually work. So here it is. Here's the exact moment it all fell apart. An app, let's say it's your airline app, needs to get your ticket information from the filing cabinet, DynamoDB. To do that, it first asks the phone book, DNS, for the right address. But the phone book was broken. It gave back the wrong address, or maybe no address at all. Suddenly, the app is completely lost. It can't find the data it needs, so it crashes. Now, just imagine that exact sequence of events happening millions of times every single second. So let's lay out the whole crime scene. You've got the giant apartment building, AWS, which basically goes into lockdown. Why? Because the main control panel, US East 1, had a fault. And what was the fault? The internet's phone book, DNS, was the broken part. And because it broke, that all-important central filing cabinet, DynamoDB, became completely unreachable. A single broken part is one thing, right? 
But what happened next? Well, it was a digital domino effect, a chain reaction that just exploded across the globe in a matter of seconds. Someone who was there described it like this, and I think it's just the perfect way to put it. Large portions of the internet suffered temporary amnesia. It's not that the data was deleted or lost. The filing cabinet was still there, perfectly safe. The problem was the internet completely forgot where it put it. A total but temporary memory loss. And the real-world impact was just staggering. For gamers, Fortnite and Roblox just went dark. For students, apps like Duolingo were totally inaccessible. In finance, trading apps like Robinhood and Coinbase just froze. And for travelers, airlines like Delta couldn't check people in because they couldn't even access their own seating charts. And you know, this kind of downtime isn't just a headache. It is astronomically expensive. That number you see on the screen, over half a billion dollars, that was the estimated loss for one single airline during a previous similar outage. When the internet's core systems go down, the total financial damage across every industry easily climbs into the billions. So how do you fix a broken internet? And maybe more importantly, how do you make sure this never ever happens again? Well, that brings us to the aftermath and some really crucial lessons learned. Fixing this wasn't as simple as just flipping a switch back on. Think about it. Once the phone book was repaired, every single app that had been failing for hours was going to try to connect all at once. That flood of traffic would have just caused a second crash. So engineers had to use a technique called throttling. They basically acted like digital traffic cops, intentionally slowing everything way down to let the system recover gently without getting overwhelmed. But the biggest lesson here is all about resilience. Relying on just one power station or even one city is just way too risky. The real key is to design your systems so they're spread out across multiple independent locations. That way, if the filing cabinet in one building catches fire, you have a perfect ready-to-go copy in another building, maybe even in another city. That's what true resilience looks like. And this whole event has pushed this fascinating new idea called chaos engineering. Companies like Netflix actually started this. They built a program called a chaos monkey that runs around their system intentionally breaking small things just to make sure their system can heal itself automatically. And now they're building a chaos gorilla to simulate a whole power station failing and even a chaos Kong to simulate an entire city like US East One completely disappearing off the map. They're literally practicing for the apocalypse. And that really brings us to our final thought here. This whole ordeal proved that the internet really does have a few central points of failure a few main control panels that everything relies on. We got through this one, but it forces all of us to ask a really big question. What's our actual plan B for when the next big one inevitably fails?